People want to know that they are seen, that they are heard, and that they matter. So at Quinnipiac University, we started this show to center the voices of men of color on campus. We'll talk about love, hip hop, mental health, politics, and a host of other topics. So if you're interested, check us out right now on The Cut. Tell me about your first experience in the shop. My first experience, I think my parents, since they were coming off the boat, <laughs> they thought any barbershop was good. So I went to Supercuts originally. Supercuts? Yeah, Supercuts. You know Supercuts. I told the barber, you know, she was a female, but I'm not going to say, like, female barbers are bad, you know, they're doing their thing now, right? I right, but um, I asked her for a fade, and because I had a flat top. So as soon as it, as soon as it started, she came with the fade and then cut off the rest of my flat top. <laughs> and I was confused. I'm just like, this ain't it. This is not for me. So after that, I started asking more of my friends, like, what type of barbershop should I go to? And a lot of them told me that I should go to barbershops where I see more people like me. You can't go to super cuts and cut waves. That doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't, yeah, that doesn't work, you know? My first experience in the shop was because I was on punishment because I was acting up at school. So my mom took me to the shop so they could cut the top of like. Like I had like a I feel like a that, nest. Yeah, I feel that. So when I so I went back to school, I wouldn't be acting up anymore. I was like, well, I had to be like second, third grade. I shaved all my head off. Kids were calling me Little Bill. It was, it was a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my my the shop like for me like initially started because like I didn't understand. I was just like a place where people went. But I, I would always see like older heads, older cats there. And everybody was just cutting it up, just chatting, chilling, doing their thing. But I don't know. Be, like over the time, you know, it just kind of became like a spot where. I could, you know, you just be you. Yeah. You feel me, like. And the old heads be helping with all that advice too. Yeah. yeah. Right. The, the, right. The knowledge. The knowledge. Come on, it's yeah. young blood. <laughs> <laughs> my dad used to cut my hair, and that Same, that, that yeah, was a tough I eight years. That, yeah. But we started going to a Haitian barber, so that's really where I started learning my own culture. And since you know my dad's fresh off the boat, he wants to be, you know, safe where he yeah. where he gets his cut and stuff like that. <laughs> Even though he wasn't a great barber either, but that's I definitely feel comfortable in helping you. Oh, many times. You look like you. Many times, bro. Many times. But okay. it, it, I learned a lot. Going into the barbershop, I think, was the worst time. 12 years old. And um, got my hairline pushed back pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty bad. So, you know, um, and I went back home. And at that time, I was young, like 12. I was in the projects. And I got laughed at for years and years and years and years and years. So... <laughs> First chance I, I, I got a chance to pick up the clippers is, it's like, yo, I did my own hair. I started cutting the ball so nobody would laugh no more. I've been bored ever since. Listen, I got laughed at so much <laughs> that here I am today. I ain't let nobody else touch my head. What does the barbershop mean to you now, though? Like, like the barbershop, like to me, it kind of like saved me from a lot of stuff. Like when I was young coming up, it was kind of rough. So um, at that time, as far as talent-wise, playing basketball, football, yeah. and all that stuff. And when I see that, I, I could no longer progress that way. And the bar, those Clippers, yeah. I touched the Clippers, yeah. it was a wrap. I, came, I went into the barbershops, I was still nervous. Even though I messed up all my friends, you <laughs> understand? But that was a process to learning. And when I, when I finally went into the barbershop, I see, okay, I see what it was about. I yeah. see the atmosphere, I see people talking and Seem like anything that I d done yesterday, yeah. and if I wanted to re hear any type of questions and stuff about it, I can go in the barbershop, I could bring up that topic, and it'll yeah. be laying, it, it's just peace of mind, you understand? Yeah. For Matt, me. It, 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 it was that space. And the other things that you, you start to learn what was happening in there, like, so you had like older cats who would be in there, never getting a cut, but yeah. just would be there like giving yeah. you just like knowledge, right? Yeah. So if you went in there, if you needed batteries, somebody was gonna come in and sell <laughs> so batteries. Yeah, if you needed, yeah, yeah like <laughs> well, we had like VHS tapes. Clothes. You know what a VHS yeah, tape is? Yeah, we know what VHS is. All right, I'm just making sure. Like, I gotta <laughs> have VHS tapes. So they would come in there and like sell VHS tapes. But then when I saw how they made money, I started to teach myself how to cut hair at, at 11. And so mm -hmm. I would take like the Nintendo wire of like a broken Nintendo like um, controller and I would tie it around my head so I can cut up to that line so my line would be mm -hmm. straight oh, that's tough. so yeah. I can fade it after that. But then after a while, I didn't need that. And I had the master holding the mirror, the mirror behind there. And then my grandmother, she lived on the 12th floor 
And so she would make like some Kool-Aid. And so around Easter, Mother's Day, first day of school, people would come up, they would sit in the living room and everybody would come back to my room and I, and I would cut it. I made like $5 on the head, then it was $7. I went and had, um, uh, I had business cards that said, that said, that said smooth cuts, S-M-O-O-V-E, like smooth cuts. And I would give it out, I had a yeah. beeper. You know, oh, you and so you nah, because oh, yeah. you swore you was no, flying. no, but, but but you have to understand. Like I was trying to make, I was trying to make money, but the legal route. Like my, my uncle and, and people used to make money illegally, so he taught me how to hustle. So I sold socks, I sold underwear in the train station. But then I was like, yo, I'm a, I'm gonna start cutting hair, and so I would make money, and that's how I bought my my J's. Like I made my own money. I didn't have to worry about nobody looking after me, like looking over my shoulder, because it was all legal, just over cutting hair, and then. Later on in the army, you could get the army cut, or you can go see Sawyer in the bathroom. I'll hook you up, but you're gonna have to pay. You know what yeah. I mean? So I made my money cutting hair in the army too. Man. Growing up, a lot of the times, like, especially being like a black male, you don't have like a lot of role models. But like yeah. you in a place where like you have older heads like dropping jewels, teaching you things, things like I didn't like I didn't know what, like shave like how to shave. I didn't know things like that growing up. And it, and it kind of helps you being a young cat in those type of environments because when you hear older people talk. You're going to try to join the older people. Yeah. So that's what kind of helped me. Smart. Yeah. Or somebody tried to convert you to Islam, bro. The man tried to try to convert me to Islam in the barbershop. Like, stupid. <laughs> Yo, but that, that's how I found Islam in the barbershop. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey. I used to go to the... To He's the, one of those heads. To the, to the, to He's to like, my brother. No, no, no. Let me tell you. Like, I went. Like, and so brothers from the nation would come in mm. like, with the final call, newspaper, bean pies, and stuff like that. And so they would try and get me to go to, the, to, to I think it was like mosque number seven because it was, it was in Harlem. And so I, I almost joined the Nation of Islam. But one of my father's friends who worked in the store was like, you know, I'm gonna teach you about Sunni Islam. So he gave me a book. And so like I started my studying of Islam in the barbershop. Like a lot of the conversations that we had, even some of the topics that I teach about now, I was getting that stuff in the barbershop. Now, some of the stuff is not truthful in the barbershop, yeah, the stories true. that people tell, but yeah. that, that's where those seeds were planted. Yeah, that's true.